to convey for their KCPE exams. Your talent, dedication and hard work will surely lead you to victory. Good luck in your exams. Merisho School, home of the boy child. Are you an aspiring candidate in the upcoming general elections? Do you want your agenda and manifesto to reach your voters effectively? At KBC, we have the most comprehensive and credible online platform that has profiles of all prospective candidates. Log on to www.kbc.co.ke slash 2022 aspirants and let Kenyans know more about you, your past achievements, your manifesto and your development agenda once you get elected to office. Office. What's more, the website is easy to navigate. We will create your profile, post pictures and short videos with your campaign messages at affordable hosting fees. Log on to www.kbc.co.ke slash 2022 aspirants today and establish your brand authority as we lead towards the forthcoming general elections. And a very good evening to you. My name is Shikshla Arora. Welcome to Easy Friday right here on KBC Channel 1. Remember, if you'd like to get in touch with us, please feel free to do so. The hashtag is Easy Friday. Talk to us on Twitter at Shiksha Arora at KBC Channel 1. Of course, we've got a very interesting show later on Spotlight as well. After this live broadcast, I'll be speaking to Esther Kazungu on her journey in the industry. Of course, a content creator, a YouTuber, um, and now she is looking to do something different. So let's uh, do that later on. But for now, it's time for the highlights. Ready to go? Stakeholders raise concerns over insecurity as KCP candidates prepare for exams. On the campaign trail, Azimiola Umoja and Kenya Kwanzaa Court, Western Kenya. Time bomb. Five out of ten buildings in Nairobi unsafe for occupation. And you're watching KBC Channel 1. This is Easy Friday. Our sign language interpreter is Byron Abuli. Now, the first story tonight, where an estimated 1.2 million pupils sitting the Kenya Certificate of Primary Education examinations on Monday next week today held their rehearsals. The 2021 KCP exams will be conducted for three days under stringent supervision. Meanwhile, a section of leaders in Baringo County wants the national government to beef up security Purity ahead of the exams. Purity Museo has the details. It was at Kimunyi Primary School in Kiambu County where Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha asked politicians to keep off learning institutions during this exam period. With effect from next week up until the end of the examination period for high school. We shall not allow any politicians from both sides. Magoha advising politicians to use alternative venues for their rallies as candidates write exams. They can go and higher ground. There are many grounds. They are study and everywhere. They can go there. We must keep the children uh, when they are doing uh, their exams 
in a very sane area. He took the opportunity to warn exam cheats. The centers have been consolidated, but I want to encourage my teachers, who are excellent, that those center managers who have been consolidated to go and do exams elsewhere, the government of the Republic of Kenya will still give them a token as they follow their students where they are going to be given an examination. I think that is, that is just unfair. The 2021 Kenya Certificate of Primary Education Examinations will be written between March 7 and March 10, while the National Secondary Education KCSE Examinations will be held between March 11 and April 1st. Nine. Rehearsals for the KCPE exams were conducted on Friday across the country. In Tigoni Primary School in Kembu County, the rehearsals kicked off smoothly with candidates being taken through the process. Naangalia ya kwamba watoto wote wako shule na tunatumia hiki hii record kuangalia wako na kuahakikisha rules zote za mtihani wanazielewa na tunawakumbusha ndio mada ikifika KCPE day we have fully prepared these learners. They have been bought textbooks, cover range of syllabus, uh, have been done in good time. So we can say we are ready for this exam. In Migori, a total of 35,552 KCPE and 22,689 KCSE candidates are expected to sit for the exams. On Monday, the candidates will write the mathematics and English exams. Science and Swahili will be taken on Tuesday. On Wednesday, candidates will write the social studies and religious education exams. In related news, leaders in the insecurity-prone areas of Baringo County want the government to reinforce security in the area ahead of the national exams. We have exams beginning uh, this week or next week uh, for primary again and for secondary. And we have a serious problem where our young people are not likely to access uh, the examinations and be able to face the future once because of their displacement. Hii ni kasi ya wakora inashambulia ya hii mbaga lini. Na tumeumia hata masyule, shule ya kapturo, kwaansia hata, hata leo, hakuna mtota hata moja. Hata jana tulisikia marisasi, tulikuwa shule, tukasikia marisasi, hatu azusome vizuri kwa ishu. Ngependa kuambia serikali watusaidia, watupatie ili tukae kama wale wengine ambao wako mashule sahizi. Purity Museo is a Friday. Now, as the Mio La Omoja presidential candidate Raila Odinga is promising massive transformation in the country in his first 100 days in office if elected president, Raila says he has a 10-point guiding plan that his administration will use to ensure he achieves what the founding fathers of the nation envisaged. The ODM leader spoke as he toured Mungoma County. Achola Simon has the details. The Azmio La Umoja Brigade, led by its presidential candidate Raila Odinga, was in Bungoma County as he seeks to solidify his support base in the wider former Western Province, even as the region increasingly becomes a battleground for presidential candidates, eyeing the 2.5 million votes at stake. Bungoma! 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 Raila kicked off his campaigns in Kimilili constituency before holding several stopovers along the way at Kamkuyua and Webuye flyover bridge before closing the day's work at poster grounds in Bungoma County. Raila promising a raft of programs that he says will go a long way in transforming the country to ensure the vision for Kenya by her founding fathers is realized. 100 days of Raila Odinga's government in Kenya. It's a quite historic. That's all. To the point, here is a good example. To the Kimbia, to the Kubadilisha Kenya, to the 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 Kenya, to Local leaders re-emphasizing the region's support for Raila Odinga while insisting that he was the best bet for the nation in the next poll. Western tukiwa na kaunti zetu tano. Magawana wetu wote watano. Wameunga serikali ya zimio mkono. Na wameunga Raila Amolo Odinga kuwa raisu watano. 
tuko na senator saba out of the seven senators ma senator watano wameunga azimio mkono wameunga Raila Amolo Odinga kuwa rais wa tano the leaders at the forum lashed out at deputy president William Ruto after his claims in the US that the country loses close to 100 billion shillings each year through corruption an american politician can never attack his government abroad ukienda america utuzi serikali yako na kuita we mjinga mimi nimetembea na nimetaka kuambia wa kenya wenzangu hasusan waluya mkitaka kuwa rais siku moja kama vile mimi nataka lazima tupigie kura raila amolo odinga a sufficient here sio Juzi Sabina Chege aliogea. Akasema ya kwamba kuna kulikuwa na utata kwa kura ya 2013 na 2017. Dakika hiyo moja IBC wakaita yeye wakapiga hisabu mpaka kwa ofisi yao. Sasa huyu William Ruto anasema ya kwamba kuna wizi ambaye inafanyika ya kura. Na yeye ndiye yuko kwa serikali na yeye ndiye deputy president. Na yeye yuko kwa serikali. Mhisa Kitui also joined the national campaign team for Ailo Odinga. Achola Simon is the Friday Bungoma County. Meanwhile, Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance leaders has challenged the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IEBC, to conduct free and fair elections. Led by Ford Kenya leader Moses Wetangula, the leaders asked IEBC to conduct the elections within the confines of law. They were speaking during a vote hunting mission in Kakamega County. Take a look. The Kenya Kwanzaa Brigade Friday took its campaigns to Kakamega County. The leaders challenged IEBC to play their role effectively come August 9th. Sisi tunaenda kulinda kura yetu. Wananchi pigieni kura. Mimi ninaenda kuhakikisha kwamba hapa Shinoi kura imepigwa. The democracy of our country has come of age. There is nobody with the capacity to interfere with the outcome of the democratic process that we are going to have on 9th of August. Ford Kenya leader Moses Wetangula asked the government to allocate adequate resources to the electoral body in order to facilitate a credible poll. We don't want to cry foul. We support IEBC as currently constituted and we want to urge Chairman Chebukati na timu yake Musikubali kuimbishia da ile inaitwa deep state act free fair and credibly so that whatever votes Kenyans cast goes to give the outcome that is desired by Kenyans The Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission IEBC has meanwhile allayed fears of rigging in the August 9th poll Speaking in Nakuru after signing a memorandum of understanding on accurate and objective coverage of elections with the Kenya Union of Journalists and the Kenya Editors Guild representing the Kenya Media Sector Group, the Commission's chairperson assured Kenyans and the international community that they are ready for the polls. And we are fully prepared for elections and uh, the purpose of say the MOU today is to ensure transparency uh, especially in the area of uh, results announcement we are saying the media will report results at the polling stations the results will be reported at the uh, uh, constituency telling centers Now, Makweni Governor Professor Kivutha Kibwana has declared he will vie for the Makweni Senate seat in the 2022 general election. Elsewhere, a supremacy battle is looming between Pamoja African Alliance Party and Orange Democratic Movement, ODM, in Kilifi County over fielding of aspirants for the August 9th polls. <laughs> Addressing a section of the county residents at ATC, Kwakavoka, while presiding over the deliberations for 2022-2023 budgetary allocations, Makweni Governor Professor Kivuza Kibwana said his decision to seek the senatorial seat was informed by desire to protect devolution. Ninajua kwamba katika kule kuangalia devolution hapa kwetu, hiyo oversight inatakikana. 
hiyo to promote and to safeguard the evolution hapa makueni naweza kusaidia Meanwhile, Usawa kwa wote party as welcome defectors from Azimio party saying it has waived nomination fees for aspirants seeking the party's ticket. Kuanzia next week, chama kina kinaanzisha hiyo signature collection because I want to be told by Kenyans whether to contest or not. I've said I will contest, but I want it to be ratified by Kenyans wote. Ndio sababu inaitwa Usawa kwa kwa kila mtu Elsewhere, a supremacy battle is looming between Pamoja African Alliance Party and Orange Democratic Movement ODM in Kilifi County over fielding of aspirants in the forthcoming general elections. Both parties support ODM party leader Raila Odinga's presidential bid under Azimio Moja, but are independently seeking other elective seats from a governor to members of county assembly in Kilifi County. Tuko na mkataba wa chama cha Jubilee tumeangalia ile maswala yanatuhusu sote na mtazamo wetu wapa na jubli kiuchaguzi unaokuja sasa ni mmoja these as odm amalindi branch officials led by nixon mramba urge kingi to concentrate on building his pamoja african alliance paa party without undermining odm and its leader hii kilifi ni ngome ya odm odm malindi haijafa tumezungumza na tumepanga mikakati ya kutosha vijana na kina mama tumeshikamana hapo ndipo watakapojua kwa hakika ODM iko alive Malindi na ODM itapitisha kila councilor ama kila MCA katika kila kila ward and in Mombasa County section of Orange Democratic Movement aspirants are demanding free and fair party primaries in the region alleging a plot to lock them out of the nomination process later for April I'm talking on behalf, on behalf of Mombasa citizens Nawaambia nyinyi watu wa Mombasa Musipoteze nafasi yenu kwa sababu ya majina ya watu in Nairobi, the new leadership of the ruling Jubilee Party led by Secretary General Jeremiah Kioni held its first national executive council meeting and resolved to extend the registration deadline. Jubilee Party has also signed a collaboration agreement with the UDM Party led by Mandela Governor Adiroba. We had a caucus here yesterday from one of our legions and they did express the need for us to extend the registration period. So it is important that we inform our members that we now have extended it to the 4th to the 11th of March. Now, Kenya's renowned public health professor, Miriam Were, has been nominated for the 2022 Nobel Peace Prize. Professor Miriam Were was nominated by the American Friends Service Committee and the Quaker Peace and Social Witness. Kamushe Meza visited the professor that we have previously featured in our Legends edition and gave us all the details. In 1983, we, we mounted the first Master of Public Health program in Kenya. Dr. Miriam Were has been featured on KBC's Legends Edition and was recently feted by the government for her contribution to women's development. The latest feather on her heart is nomination for the 2022 Nobel Peace Prize by the American Friends Service Committee and Quaker Peace and Social Witness. Well, the first feeling I had was that I was surprised. Wow, that's a, that's a great thing because the issues we have spent our lives addressing are becoming important enough for people to notice that they are important. Dr. Wera says her passion for promotion of public health started as she pursued her career in medical school inspired by various basic problems in the villages. I was informed by, by email that I was going to get a call from the American Friends Service Committee. And, but I didn't know what the call was going to be about. They, they just told me that we have been doing our research uh, in Kenya, in Africa, globally, and you have excelled in these areas, and we have decided to nominate you. She joined medicine when we were married, and a lot of wazes in Kenya told me, how can you leave your wife at she's joining medicine instead of cooking ugali for you? I said, my friend, that is none of your business. You mind what's in your house, and I'll mind what's in our house. 
Dr. Wera says she feels happy to have contributed to the shifting of the official outlook on health from curative occupation to prevention and promotion. What it means to me is that I see it as a possibility that being interested in helping other people is a good thing. I hope that this nomination gives me a greater opportunity to interact with young people. We have linked ourselves together in a lot of activities, in a lot of things that we, there are very, very few things that we did separately or we have done separately. So when I see this thing coming, I feel joyful and thank God for it. I have given her good support and she has given me good support also. The nomination is in recognition of Dr. Were's tireless work since the 1970s in promoting trust between governments, health authorities and the citizens through culturally sensitive programs. The nomination gives her the opportunity to become the second Kenyan to win Nobel Peace Prize after the late Professor Wangari Madai. <laughs> All right, and it's time that we take that commercial break. We'll be back in just a moment. Don't go too far. Remember, you can keep interacting with us. The hashtag is Easy Friday. Talk to us on social media at Shiksha Aurora at KBC Channel One. Tell us where you're watching from. Let's go for that break. Get Romans chapter 10 as your skis are tuned on your phone. Dial star 811 star 962 hash. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 9. To get Romans chapter 10, dial star 811 star 962 hash. Star 811 star 962 hash. Welcome back to Easy Friday. Now, Kenya's High Commissioner to Nigeria, who is also former Migori County Senator Wilfred Mashage, has been laid to rest. Mashage collapsed at his home in Abuja and died on 19 February while being rushed to hospital. His remains were interred at his home in Kenacha, Korea constituency. Take a look. The late Dr. Wilfred Machange served in several government ministries as an assistant minister and was at one time appointed a cabinet minister for East African Community Affairs. In 2007, he was the Democratic Party candidate and was elected to represent the Korea constituency in the National Assembly of Kenya in the December 2007 parliamentary election. In January 2018, President Uhuru Kenyatta appointed him as an ambassador before being redesignated to serve as Kenya's High Commissioner to Nigeria and accredited to 12 other countries in Central and West Africa. ODM leader Raila Odinga, National Assembly Speaker Justin Muturi were among those who attended the barrier. <laughs> Kwanza, na alikuwa anajua na kongea vizuri sana. Tena kiongea kwa kiswahili, anawatumia ili kiswahili sanifu. Mashage was not only a seasoned politician, but also a consummate diplomat and a committed public servant who served this country with distinction 
and utmost dedication. His death, therefore, has robbed us of a great leader, a mentor, and a friend. Machage leaves behind a wife, several children, and a grandchildren. <laughs> Frederick Muki for Easy Friday. Now, on to the COVID-19 update, where the country's COVID-19 positivity rate now stands at 0.5%. 23 new COVID-19 infections have been reported out of 6,528 samples tested in the last 24 hours. The total confirmed positive cases now stand at 323 and 57 out of the over 3.3 million samples screened in the country so far. No death has been reported in the last 24 hours. The total fatalities now still stand at 5,640. Meanwhile, over 16 million vaccines have been administered in the country with 7.8 million people having been partially vaccinated, while another 7.6 million are fully vaccinated. According to data from Johns Hopkins University, over 442 million COVID-19 infections have been confirmed globally with 5.9 million deaths reported so far. All right, now moving on to my culture. Well, the Abashitsula clan in Kakamega County has a unique way of burying the elderly upon death. This is having the body assume a sitting position. It is a culture that members of the Idaho sub-community who have continued to embrace despite the changing times. In this week's episode of My Culture, Anne Buru takes us through this unique burial ceremony. Take a look. Shinyiha village Ikolomani in Kakamega County. The final rite of passage from the Rafael Icheshi Musebe. Friends and relatives of the deceased are here. They gathered in their numbers to pay their last respect as they witnessed the burial of the late Musebe, who is to be buried in accordance with the Idaho's customs. The dead are buried while in a sitting position. Not everyone in the clan is eligible for this particular custom, as Mze Athanas explains. Kuna qualification. We ilo ji Mze akisha oa alafa mesa mtoto mtoto amesha tayiriwa amu msika na meole wa mesa anas anas tayiri kusiko kama mikiti. Immediately the body arrives in the homestead. Carpenters get down to work. <laughs> Making the casket that the deceased will be laid to rest in a sitting position. He further explains that a special conversation will have to take place between the deceased and the living for the body to agree fit in the sitting position in this special coffin. The culture, according to them, is very crucial, and those eligible to be buried in that position should be, or else the family will know no peace. <laughs> After the burial of Mze Rafael Musebe, it was time to send away the evil spirits and a bull takes charge. This is a culture that has been passed on from generations. <laughs> Reporting for my culture, I am Anburu.
a reason why I absolutely love the My Culture segment because you get to learn something different every single week. Thank you so much, Anne. What an insight that was right there. Now moving on to some global news where Russian forces have seized the largest nuclear plant in Europe as its war on Ukraine enters the ninth day. Ukrainian authorities say Russian forces attacked the plant, killing an unknown number of people. Western powers have condemned Russia for what they called a horrific and reckless act. Russia has so far seized one city, Kherson, in southern Ukraine. A Russian attack on the largest nuclear plant in Europe caused a fire outbreak at the five-story training facility. The plant, however, is safe, although under Russian control. An unknown number of people were reported killed and injured during the attack. Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky, who is in hiding, warned Russia against bombing the nuclear plant. If there is an explosion, that's the end for everyone, the end for Europe, the evacuation of Europe. Only urgent action by Europe can stop the Russian troops. Do not allow the death of Europe from a catastrophe at a nuclear power station. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson condemned Russia's attack on nuclear plant as reckless action that could now directly threaten the safety of all Europe. Russia's military strategy appears to target key Ukrainian infrastructure. The city of Kherson is under Russian control, while other cities, including the capital Kyiv, northeastern Kharkiv, and Mariupol in southeast, continue to be attacked. Gisho Kiwashira, Easy Friday. candidate in the upcoming general elections? Do you want your agenda and manifesto to reach your voters effectively? At KBC, we have the most comprehensive and credible online platform that has profiles of all prospective candidates. Log on to www.kbc.co.ke slash 2022 aspirants and let Kenyans know more about you, your past achievements, your manifesto and your development agenda once you get elected to office. What's more? More. The website is easy to navigate. We will create your profile, post pictures and short videos with your campaign messages at affordable hosting fees. Log on to www.kbc.co.ke slash 2022 aspirants today and establish your brand authority as we lead towards the forthcoming general elections. Especially when you're referring to people age. Please let us go to the office so that I can confirm. We can do this after class, right? But I don't know you. I have not seen your certificates or papers to prove that you are qualified to teach in this institution. Uh, this institution cannot afford my services. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because you are too old or you are too run it. Uh, Miss Becky, you can call me whatever you wish. You can call me Rue. 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 Baby, whatever that you wish, eh? as long as you are here in the palace of Antibena. Right now, it's time to take a look at what's happening in the world of business. And for that, we've got Betty Kiptum, who will be on the other side, telling us all about matters business. Betty, over to you. 
Well, uh, thank you very much, Shiksha, and thank you for staying with us on Easy Friday here. As you've heard, my name is Betty Kiptum. Let's delve into the business. Do you have any idea if the building that you're living in is safe for occupation? Now, five out of ten buildings in Kenya are unsafe for occupation. According to research by the National Building Inspectorate, Nairobi, Kiambu, and Nakuru County are the worst affected. Engineers Board of Kenya says it has kicked off a countrywide structural assessment of ongoing building construction instructions in eight counties to ascertain the quality of engineering works and services, compliance to standards and remedial measures. In the last two years, about 50 buildings have collapsed across the country, killing more than 200 people. A week ago, a hundred million shillings bridge in Kajado collapsed days after it was commissioned. This was largely blamed on poor workmanship and weak structural work. A recent survey conducted by the National Building Inspectorate, NBI, said that out of the 14,900 buildings inspected by inspectorate, 723 were classified as dangerous, 10,791 unsafe, 1,217 fair, and only 2,194 are safe. The Engineers Board of Kenya has embarked on a one-month exercise that will assess the construction of the ongoing buildings in seven counties. The exercise in Nairobi, Kiambu, Vihiga, Kisumu, Kakamega, Siaya, Mombasa and Wasingishu will establish the adequacy of supervisory arrangements, compliance with the building code, statutory requirements such as approval of developments and oversight arrangements by counties to ensure quality and safety is achieved and all we want to to do is to move there discuss with the project owners discuss with the designers discuss with the contractors and really see what went wrong what we're seeing they are, they are also looking at the high risk projects we wanted to do it in a more proactive way rather than where a building collapses and we are informed this time what we're trying to do is go before Speakers at the Third World Engineers Day call for the training of engineers. The government is mulling over a proposal by the institutions of engineers of Kenya to set aside 0.05 of the country's infrastructure vote to the training of engineers. The government is further urging the Engineers Board of Kenya and the Commission of Higher Education to relook into the issue of accreditation of engineering programs. We cannot continue to have a standoff on an issue that affects the future of our engineering students. It's like shooting ourselves in the foot. Caroline Jinga, Fu Easy, Friday. Now, Karoche Brewery's chief executive, Tabitha Karanja, has said the company will shut down in the next seven days if no interventions are made. The Kenya Revenue Authority sealed the operations of the local brewer on the 31st of January this year over tax arrears amounting to 300 million shillings. Karoche Breweries has been in a long contracted tax tussle with the Kenya Revenue Authority for decades now, but the tension came to a crescendo when the taxman closed down operations of its factory in Naivasha, bringing major operations of the brewer to a standstill. Following the move, over 250 workers are facing the axe if the company operations are not reopened. Kerucha Chief Executive Tabitha Karanja says liquor worth over 500 million shillings risk going down the drain within the next seven days if there are no changes. The government should evaluate the post-COVID effects and the impact they have on the different sectors of the economy in order to formulate policy measures that will generate the players and the extension of the economy. The company owes the taxman over 300 million shillings in tax arrears and around 250 million shillings in debt to equity, family and ABSA banks. Karanja is now requesting President Uhuru Kenyatta to intervene in an effort to get the operations of the company on its feet. She says before the COVID pandemic, Karachi used to pay 200 million to the taxman but ran into financial headwinds when the government closed bars and restaurants. The company's attempt to engage with KRA has failed, according to the CEO. So that now we get back to where we were and even expand and uh, give in more than what we are paying. 
But because of 300 million uh, debt, I don't think it's, uh, it's right for KRA to stop our operation. Now, Kenya's exports of tea, flowers, coffee and fruits to Russia have been derailed due to sanctions imposed on Moscow by the United States and the European Union. This has further been worsened after major shipping lines temporarily suspended cargo shipments to and from Russia in response to the sanctions. Labor Cabinet Secretary Simon Chelugui says the current routing of planes from the war-torn country to the Far East has made exports to Russia expensive. The sweeping sanctions imposed by the West on Russia due to its military activities in Ukraine have turned into a major headache for Kenya, which has been diversifying its export base in Moscow. Kenya has been pursuing aggressively the Russian markets with trade between the two countries, topping 47 billion shillings in 2020, and is expected to reach 100 billion shillings by the year 2030. Russia has become a major buyer of Kenyan tea, flowers and horticulture. Moscow has also been growing as a major source of tourists to Kenya, with Nairobi targeting more chartered flights from the Far East nation. Labor Cabinet Secretary Simon Chalugui has said the blockade of exports is set to double the cost of shipment of commodities, which will directly eat into the returns of smallholder horticulture farmers. Which is going to affect employers and employees and the business, how business will be conducted. Speaking in Mombasa during the ongoing employer summit, Chalugui has also expressed fears that if the conflict is prolonged, fertilizer prices are likely to double since Ukraine is a major source of fertilizer for Kenya. Borrowing across the globe will also be affected because there are embargoes that the world is uh, mobilizing themselves to suspend, to stop and even block. And that will still have an impact on employers and employees. There is no two way out because that is where the world is. If we don't do so, we will find ourselves irrelevant. And Kenya will be exporting 15,000 live animals to Oman in the next two weeks. The development comes as Kenya is preparing a delegation to Saudi Arabia to explore new livestock markets in the country. The government has also said the completion of the Bachuma Livestock Export Processing Zone in Taita Taveta will be completed later this year. In January, Kenya exported 13,000 live animals worth 125.4 million shillings to Oman, the first shipment in 16 years. This after trade negotiations between the two nations that, among other agreements, proposed enhancement of the animal traceability systems to reduce cases of animal pests and diseases. The Middle East nation will once again make forays into the Kenyan market, seeking to purchase 15,000 additional animals in the next two weeks. We were already sending there. We, we, the, the time animals were sent, about 13,000 animals, the small animals, sheep and goat, they went, and I'm told the sheep is coming again to collect more. The government now says it plans to get more market for live animals as they seek to leverage on the soon to be completed Bachuma quarantine facility. The Kenya Defense Force, that was stuck with the construction of the 370 million shilling facility, is set to announce tenders for the completion of the remaining 20% of the facility. Kenya has also initiated talks with Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates in a bid to start export of live animals to the two countries. Uh, Oman were here. They visited all our... They visited that by Chuma. They visited uh, Macnon. They visited our laboratories and uh, they, they were happy. The report says they are happy with the, with the tenders that they saw. So they are ready to start importing. United Arab Emirates also is interested. Uh, Qatar. A high-ranking Kenyan delegation is expected to leave the country next month, headed for the Gulf nations. Kenya is also seeking to leverage on the Bachuma facility to join Botswana as the only African nation exporting meat to the U.S. after Kenya lost the market in the 90s due to the collapse of the Kenya Meat Commission. Benson Ryoba reporting for Easy Friday. Now, long bureaucratic process and a complex financial regime is frustrating access to credit for women looking to venture into business. ABSA Bank Business Banking Director Elizabeth Wasuna says stakeholders in the financial ecosystem should develop policies that make it easy for women-owned enterprises to thrive. 
According to 2021 Kenya National Bureau of Statistics data, it showed that women accounted for 61.9% of the jobs lost in 2020, indicating that more women became available to start their own businesses in order to make a living. But a myriad of challenges continues to discourage women entrance in business. Over a period of time, over the last two, three years, we've been having a conversation with women just to figure out what is it that they need to be able to support their business to grow. And some of the things that they said they had issues with are, for instance, access to finance. They spoke about access to markets, access to mentoring and coaching, and access to networking. Uh, one of the challenges, the feedback we're getting is it has been, during the COVID period, it has been very lonely. And uh, they've had gone through challenges uh, individually and they've not had forums whereby uh, they can come and meet and discuss and see how they can uh, address the challenges, identify opportunities and together uh, go for business uh, growth. Speakers at a function by ABSA and the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry Women in Business Forum have said diversification and entry into technology was the safest way to stay afloat under the tough economic landscape. How are you digitizing your business? How are you showing up um, on the internet, on, the, on various social media to support your businesses? We, without a digital strategy, I think you're going to struggle to exist in a world and it doesn't matter whether you're selling physical goods. Currently, women in business make up only 20% of the GDP of the country, with financiers calling for women in business to also consider better succession plans to ensure business continuity. Our challenges to the, the women and the SMEs in the room is can we make sure your business can transcend you, go, can go beyond you? And so succession, as you rightfully put it, is a conversation we must have so that we're prepared for those eventualities. Other challenges faced by women businesses include lack of mentorship and capacity building. Alan Aoko, Easy Friday. And a 17 billion shillings leather park in Athi River is set to open in May this year after years of delays. The tannery that sits on a 500 acre land will include 14 tanneries and an effluent treatment plant. It is a Vision 2030 project that seeks to turn Kenya into a leather and hides powerhouse in the region. Cabinet Secretary Peter Munya says all the necessary equipment has been installed awaiting commissioning by the president in two months time. The global trade in leather products is estimated to be more than $100 billion a year, with the demand for leather and leather products expected to take in the coming years. The leather city is expected to transform Kenya as a tanning hub for the region through procurement of hides and skins and supply of leather in both local and international markets. The Kinanir Leather Industrial Park is a Vision 2030 project and has faced many delays due to financing challenges. After years of construction, the facility is now expected to be commissioned in May this year. So we were here today to inspect the progress in terms of uh, completion of these projects that have kind of delayed because of the COVID uh, uh, problems. Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Peter Munya says that the facility will help turn Kenya into a major player of finished leather goods in Africa. Kinani leather park that is intended to help the country uh, add value to our hinds and skins and also create employment. part of our strategy to industrialize. The project is expected to create more than 50,000 direct jobs in the first phase with a production capacity of 10 million shoes annually. The target is to not just do the leather, but also produce finished leather products, shoes, and it has a capacity of producing million, 10 million shoes per year. Ndutamu Kami for Easy Friday. That is where we close the business news this evening, but don't go too far. Sports news is coming up with Karen Kibet. My name is Betty Kiptum. Do have yourself a lovely night. Bye-bye.
Do you have a new story to share with KBC? Get in touch swiftly on email news at kbc.co.ke or call 0723 or 0734-780-124. There'll be a job opening soon. Really? Please, I've enrolled in a school. I need the job. I don't call the shots. It has been decided. Where's my rent? I'll pay. I'm not getting into your suicide pact madness again. You help me! If I catch him cheating on me, then I have solid evidence and I will get 15 million. No family involved. If you want to have a job done, you have to make it worth the while. Okay. Everything you'll need is in there. You promised to deliver. I just did. Well, I'm not satisfied with it. <laughs> see, see, I told you. I would have the last laugh. Especially when you're referring to people age. Please just go to the office so that I can confirm. We can do this after class, right? But I don't know you. I have not seen your certificates or papers to prove that you are qualified to teach in this institution. Uh, this institution cannot afford my services. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because you are too old or you are too run it. Uh, Miss Becky, you can call me whatever you wish. You can call me Rue. 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 A baby, whatever that you wish, eh? As long as you are here in the palace of Antibella. Welcome back to Easy Friday. Let's now get sporty. My name is Karen Kibet. Now, the 18-year-old Njoroge Kibugu is the lone Kenyan to make it into the weekend at the 53rd edition of the Magical Kenya Open. Njoroge is the first Kenyan amateur to make cut at the Kenyan Open since Boniface Sim Simwa and Colin Somondi in 2011. On his magical Kenya Open debut, home golfer Njoroge Kibugu had a bogey free round of five under par 66 at the par 71 Mutaga Golf Club course to secure a place in the weekend. Njoroge had three bodies and an equal at the 18th hole to move joint fifth on a total of six under par 136. He is the only local at the event to make the cut and the first Kenyan amateur to do so since Boniface Simwa and Colin Zomondi in 2011. My caddy Bo, he was cracking jokes. Yeah, he was just making me have fun, chilled, and yeah. I've, I've played here since I was like actually like six, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I, you can say I know the ins and outs, but you can still set up the course harder than what I know it is. Shubhankar Sharma of India is top of the leaderboard after a round of 4 under par 67 for a total of 10 under par 132. Masahiro Kawamura of Japan and Scotsman Ewan Ferguson are joined second on 9 under par 133 heading to moving day. Really happy. Uh, you know, whenever you finish with two birdies, you're always happy. And I'm a happy man today. It uh, was quite a slow start for me on the back nine. Not many things happening, but that eagle on the 18th really propelled me. Mm, some missed iron shots, but my uh, chipping and putting very good. Uh, Bogey free round is so good for me. Yes. 75 golfers made the cut and will play two more rounds over the weekend. The Magic Gold Kenya Open has a total prize fund of 1.75 million euros, with the winner taking home 262,500 euros. For Easy Friday, I am Daniel Wahome. 
100 meter record holder uh, Ferdinand Omanyala and Purity Komen produced masterclass performance in the third round of the AK track and field athletics meet after emerging victorious in the 100 meters and 10,000 meters respectively. The day two event will end on Saturday and will be used to select a team that will compete in the national qualifiers ahead of the Commonwealth Games. Elsewhere, the world under 20 race walk champion Harris Tonwanyonyi narrowly missed out on a medal in his debut appearance at the 2022 World Athletics Race uh, Walking Race Championship in Muscat Oman. The 19-year-old finished fourth in the men's under 20 10-kilometer race. Participating in the race for the first time this year, Komen dominated the race from the onset. She took charge of the leading pack that comprised of Agnes Mumbua and Emily Chebet. Komen crossed the line in 32 minutes and 33 seconds, while Agnes Mumbua came in second. Emily Chebet completed the podium dash. As I said, it was fair, but uh, I was targeting to run 31. To prepare Mzuri, to Naweka, Zile Tunaita weekend miss, and to you any one or other, I nagan wale to Konawa, Sababu, the Manariada, where Anaweza Chagulua Lazima, at Mise Kito Tunaita Kiwango, qualifying standards. In the men's 100 meter semi finals, Ferdinand Manyala emerged victorious after clocking 10. 0 0.04 seconds, followed by Dennis Nyongesa and Nicholas Motiso, who finished second and third respectively. The Athletics Kenya track and fields competitions are expected to come to an end tomorrow, with athletes hoping to qualify for the trials, which will see them represent Kenya in the coming Commonwealth Games. For Easy Friday Sports, I'm Daniel Mwendwa. Thank you, Dan, for that report. Beautiful PTC right there. Moving on, former Shujara captain and KCB back rower Andrew Amonde says there is no pressure as his sides prepare to face Menangai Oilers in the Kenyan Cup semi-finals first leg clash this weekend at the Den in Ruaka. In other semi-final fixtures, Cabra Sugar will face Strathmore Leos at the ASK Kakamega grounds. Tulikuwa tunatarajia tupate ushindi kwa hivyo tuko na furaha sana lakini tumekuwa na uh, changamoto sana mingi wanafunzi wetu hawa hawana vifaa ambavyo vinaweza kutumika kwa michezo uh, kwa hivyo tuna expect in future kama tunapata mtu wa kutusaidia tupate vifaa ambavyo tunatumia kucheza mpira wa soka kwa hivyo pia serikali inazafikiria njia ya kuleta eh, michezo ya hawa wa wanafunzi wa demavu ili waweze pia kuparticipate kama wengine wanavyo participate na wapate pia njia za ku join zile professional teams We, uh, I do apologize for that technical mix-up. The story that has just aired right now is that St. Angel, St. Angel FC humbled kids' deaf women's team uh, beat 1-1-0 uh, one, in the second edition of the National Deaf Women Football Championship held at Buhungu Stadium in Kakamega County. En route to the final, the kids' uh, deaf women's team defeated Maysland 1-0 while St. Angela humbled Nyamira DFC. In other matches, Kitale defeated Nyamira 2-1, Flamingo trounced to Busia 3 nil while Kaka Kamanga drew nil nil against Kujo girls. The championship was used to select a team of 30 players that will go to residential camp in preparation for the 24th Summer Deaf Olympics, slated for 1st to 15th March in Brazil. Kenya will also be represented in, ba in the basketball men's and women's, handball men and women, basketball men and women, and golf men. We can now take the Shujak. Uh, 
the Kenya Cup semis footage, uh, where former Shujaa captain and KCB back rower Andrew Amonde says there is no pressure as his side uh, prepares to face Menanga Oles in the Kenya Cup semi-finals first leg clash this weekend at the Den in Ruaka. In the other semi-final fixture, Cabra Sugar will face Strathmore Leos at the ASK Kakamega Grounds. Let's have that right now. Defending champions KCB RFC will on Saturday seek to qualify for the final for the fifth time in a row, playing with home ground advantage at Oraka Sports Club. <laughs> on the other hand, the Nakuru based side Menengai Oilers will be eyeing their first final since they were promoted. The two sides met last season in the semi finals where KCB trounced their opponents 35 17. I think we are the bigger side and the, the more, I would say, more flexible side to play in a semis. So we are not taking it as pressure, we are just taking it as a challenge, a challenge that it, it's within our reach and we know exactly what we need to do to be able to go through the semi-finals. They also met in the league phase this season in a closely contested affair where KCB managed to secure an arrow 23-19 winner. The boys have been working hard. We've put into play, in place the systems that we've been working through and we've stepped already on the accelerator and we're in the playoff mood. Watch this face. Oilers to now respect the Nini team poor, we may train, we may chase game smart, we can win Zao. So, Lazima to approach na respect on Afa. But, Pia kwa fans wetu, Lazima to be to represent Pia. Wakuje to, Wakuje kwa wingi to support, will not disappoint them. The Kenya Cup 2021-22 league phase ended in a dramatic style last weekend as KCB ended league leaders Cabra Sugar and beat and run of 10 games. The bankers finished second with 48 points, while Menengai Oilers came in third with 39 points. In the other semi-final fixture, Cabra Sugar will take on Strathmore Leos at the ASK Kakamega grounds. Defending champions Tasca FC will take on Police FC in one of the six Kenyan Premier League matches slated for Saturday in different venues across the country. In the English Premier League, high-flying Liverpool will host West Ham United. For this and more, here is a look at the Weekend Sports Diary. Those are all the sports stories we had lined up for you tonight. Uh, it's time for me to tell you good night, but the broadcast is not yet over as Shiksha Aurora has an amazing interview in her weekly segment called Spotlight tonight. You don't want to miss that out. Have yourself a peaceful night. My name is Karen Kibet.
watu wanadindisha mkonga wando kiboko ya warembo wale wanaojipitisha vitonga penye dhiki na shuruba vikia kunuli ni kumbata viki viki upande uba upote lipo kanifuata bado wana nita mzugaji vikizi hata ya kumaitaji sina biashara mtaji ulisema mola no mpaji Nipande tu mwage mbolea baby oh 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 ah ukitaka tena tutaendelea oh 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 shamba mwaga maji ni mwage mbolea my baby oh 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 ah ukitaka tena tutaendelea wale msikiza wale msikiza wale msikiza it's gotta be DJ Cold Jazz. You see your kids, man. Me niko crying, go ki doz. Pia na omba, so pia usi mind niki flows. Ni shukrani, narudisha kwa wanjiko kimani. Si mge mjua, pia nyi mge mpe shukrani. Kwa pilka niko, jukuna mali mina dai kufika. Na focus kwa compass, ukiona ni me feature. Sio na macho peke, unaweza on a vision. So official, peke wana niki wa in. And welcome to the show. This is Easy Friday. It's time to get into spotlight. I've got Esther Kazungu with me here tonight. I'm sure you've watched her all over social media. Of course, she rose to fame during the pandemic. Um, I think in 2020 is where we got to see a lot 
about uh, who Esther Kazuma really is and we got to see her personality through her videos. Her videos, I have to say, are hilarious. If you haven't checked her out yet, what are you waiting for, Esther? Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Wow, you're <laughs> so different in person. Yeah, you I'm are, shy. Yeah? I'm shy. Do you remember when you told me you're shy? I'm like, what? The Esther I know. <laughs> the one I see on Instagram. You're shy. Yes. Are you, are you actually an introvert? Yes. Mostly. Really? I'm an ambivert. Okay. But I lean mostly towards the introverted side. Really? Yeah. Be, if I stay at home, the pandemic was a blessing because yeah. I don't like going out. Okay. <laughs> so, so now I have no excuse. Yeah. So it's, it's sad. Okay. Yeah. Now you're just like, uh, what do I yeah. say? <laughs> I can't come because... Well, <laughs> uh, I would like to stay at home. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have plans to do nothing. Yeah. So, so Esther, you know, I remember when I started watching your videos, I was like, this is genius because it was fresh. It was unique. I hadn't seen anything like this before. Um, you know, you started getting really famous amongst South Africans. Mm -hmm. That's where I guess you, you got your uh, vir viral videos, right? Yeah. The first one was in, in, in the, in parliament in South Africa and you were just mimicking the politicians. And I had to say, I have to say like, it was so creative. How did you come up with that idea? Thank you. So, it was, I keep saying, it's by oops. <laughs> it was really by oops, because you see the way um, TikTok actually has trends yeah. that just come and then they go, they yeah. come and go. So there was that trend, during that yeah. time there was that trend uh, using that, that song, where people were imitating their favorite movie scenes, yes. their favorite um, music videos, yeah. just picking something from their end imitating okay so i decided you know what i really i've known those videos i've been watching those videos for a long time really? the south african videos yeah so i decided you know what i'm going to do this i didn't really think people had not seen those videos because yeah. i was living in that bubble where i thought since i have seen those videos, Everybody everyone has seen, has seen yeah. these videos so it went viral and then people started asking for more yeah. do our country do morocco do and i had to research i had to research for all the videos that followed i hadn't planned to yes. do it forever but i had to research and now do more videos because that that's what people on tiktok mm -hmm. wanted and uh it spilled over to instagram and 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 twitter and everyone was just loving it i was like oh okay Cool. Yeah. cool. Do you know the amount of effort that goes into those videos, I have to say, is commendable because people just watch these 30 second videos and they're like, wow, this is great, this is fun, and they move on with their lives. But you, on the other hand, you have to go, you have to look for you know, these different scenes in different parliaments around the world. Um, you have to like, see what different countries politicians are doing, uh, how, how governments are behaving. And like, it's very interesting because I'm sure you've put in hours of effort and, and, and hard work into these videos. How long does it take before you finally shoot a video? So before I shoot a video, I have to, first of all, if somebody tags me in a video, that's the better, because I'm just like, okay, fine, I have something. Yes, you have content. But if I, but now the, the, the difficult part is really looking for the background, since I'm using the TikTok effect. Okay. Uh, looking for a background that's clear enough for people to see this is actually from a specific country. It can't be any other country. So recording takes, it depends. <laughs> it can take three hours, five wow. hours. Wow. Depending on how many characters I'm imitating. Yes. Because some videos I take up maybe uh, one of the members of parliament, the speaker, and then like a couple of, mm. of members of, in the parliament. And so the more the characters, the more the hours. Mm. The editing is the easy part. Do you I do it like all yourself? Is, yeah, yeah. Wow. I'm just like speak to the manager okay <laughs> <laughs> i turn around and it's me again yeah. but yeah I've, for the for the longest time i've been doing everything myself Amazing. i am the talent i am the editor i am the costume person wow i am the i am the lights person everything yeah amazing like I guess so. I get so impressed because, you know, sometimes you look at a, a an individual and you're like, how can they manage to do all these things at the same time and be so good at it, right? So yeah. I'm guessing over time, you know, uh, you've probably perfected the skill. In the beginning, you were probably figuring yourself, you know, figuring out what exactly it is that you wanted to do your niche in social media, mm -hmm. and then came content creation and then came influencing. Yeah. So, so when is the first time that you actually got a deal? Somebody reached out to you and they're like, we want you to market for us ah <sighs> this is okay well there's the first time i got just a deal and then there's the first time i got paid I, for it yeah 
not really paid. I got paid for both. Okay. But there's the first time you get now like an international brand and you're like, okay, now this is big. Yeah. yeah so the first time I got a gig that paid me was 20, I think 2019. I was still working. Wow. I still had my job. And then the, the next time I got a gig that was big and it, it was a big brand and I was really excited was in 2020. Okay. Mm -hmm. Immediately I left my job. It so just this is after home. you Thank had God. the videos that went viral? No, no, no. This before. is before because okay. that gig came and then it was dry and I was like, ah, did I make a mistake? Yeah. What am I going to do? And then now the videos went viral and 2021 was just, it was beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. Um, what I saw and what I really thought was amazing and I was very intrigued was that I saw you say your wedding cost 60,000 shillings. <laughs> now I was just like how is that even how? How is that possible Esther? <laughs> I want to know. In this Nairobi that we're in right now how? Well it's just an estimate though. Um, paying for food because yeah. we did it at a restaurant so okay. we paid for the food and now the plus the AG process which is not really expensive. Yeah it's not. And what else? What was the other? Because I feel like the th food was like Decor. 35. And then I'm I'm thinking of what this other 30 was. <laughs> I can't remember. Maybe your outfit. N not really. I think decor. But there was no, it was just, they had to just arrange like the chairs they usually use in mm, a... So there was no decor? Yeah, there was wow. nothing. It was just a really scenic uh, restaurant. They so had you actually didn't moved. need much? Yeah, I didn't need much. Mm, I can't remember how we got to, wow. <laughs> I can't remember. I, I, how we like, got to I like that you know you actually managed to make that work because right now I feel like people have a lot of pressure from society, from you know social media. Um, when you go to someone's Instagram and you see them getting married and there's like a big fat wedding. My wedding, my wedding was big. Yo, you had a yo, big yo, yo, fat saw, Indian I wedding, saw, right? I saw. So <laughs> I was just like, how did you manage to make this happen, <laughs> Esther? It's amazing because I really think that we spend so much time planning these big weddings and then after the weddings you're broke and you're like wow mm -hmm. what next mm -hmm. so it's good to know that there's people out there people like you um who really think that it's not it's not about how big it is it's about mm -hmm. who is there and it's about who you're getting married to exactly exactly plus you see if i had the money i probably would yeah. <laughs> go all out but yeah. i i didn't yeah i wanted to still have uh some money to use in the marriage of course like, yeah afterwards how yeah so it? it's not it's no shade to anyone who goes yeah. all out like yeah. if you can't do it but if you can't it's not a must yeah, and it's not a must. i'm glad okay i didn't think it's that big of a deal i thought well i don't consider myself like a big celebrity <laughs> 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 but for me to have inspired people to you, you know live within their means it's it's amazing and i'm grateful i'm humbled yeah. i'm really humble it it's and it's not stressful like just I, I feel like people live with their head too much yes. because you're thinking, now what will they say? Imagine mm. they don't care. Yeah. They are worried, stressed about how the cost of living is rising and they are not making enough money. They are not worried about your, your wedding. wedding. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, do what you're comfortable. Like yeah. get out of your mind and leave. Yeah. Actually leave, yeah. I love, I love that advice. Words <laughs> of wisdom right there. That's a gem. <laughs> Courtesy of Esther Kazugu. Now, Esther, let's talk about your relationship. I just think it's the most beautiful beautiful thing I've seen online because you're friends and you know the banter the friendship that you share the bond you have with your husband it is something that I'm just like wow um, this is the kind of relationship that everyone should have <laughs> it's, it's just so nice and it's just so refreshing especially in this day and age where the pressure is just too much and and everyone is just like oh we're in Nairobi oh you know <laughs> we're in the streets <laughs> everyone has a different notion of course different uh, perception of mm. what marriage should should look like mm -hmm. and what dating should look like um, so how long did you date and 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 when when did you decide that you know he's the one um, and what is it about him that just makes your marriage so beautiful wow these are those questions people ask and you go blank oh. <laughs> anyway um, um, we dated for six years okay three broke up got back together for three and then got married um, what is it like we're crazy we're just silly like the silly you see yeah and I'm not trying to that's exactly take, how you yeah, are that's how home. we it's so it's, I love that he genuinely laughs at things I do <laughs> like it's just genuine to him yeah. he's like hey are you okay yeah. <laughs> are you okay and he is also silly yeah. like he he is silly it's just that his is not on display yeah but yeah um, we're just goofballs okay. that's what I love I 
we always make fun of of each other and and we're really like so, so you will have been with someone who's always street they're just about life they're about yeah. let's make moves they're about you know as we just we're cruising we're just in cruising the yeah well. <laughs> so nice to see again if you haven't checked out her instagram please go and see the videos that she's posted with her husband dearest i mean <laughs> i just have a big smile from ear to ear just watching them because they just look like they're having so much fun so i can imagine what their life must be at home as well because you said that's just how you are as a couple yeah so that's that's incredible um esther i i, I read that you did broadcast journalism yeah right yeah and and how is that experience were you ever planning on getting on radio or being on TV at some point in your life? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I did I studied linguistics media and communication in my okay. university. I wanted to be a news anchor. Mm. But <laughs> but I I I realized you have to like climb up from being a reporter. Yes. And I'm a very pathetic writer. Oh. I'm such a pathetic <laughs> writer. I did um, like short stories. I remember my worst moment was when I was interning okay and I did uh, so what we usually do or what we used to do was we get the the story for the radio yeah and then we expand it for yes. uh, like for either digital or yes or or newspaper <clears throat> I got my story and then I did not know how to expand it I was like I, I only have this sentence like these these two sentences for radio I don't know how to expand this story yeah to be bigger and that's how I knew in uh, yeah uh, this is I'm not, not for me <laughs> <laughs> this is not for me I'm not cut out for this life <laughs> yeah so I I um, I studied that it's not all a waste because so many things I you're applying them now exactly so many things I'm creation exactly like you know code of conduct and those yes. ethics and yes some things at least i can borrow some things from mm -hmm. what i studied yeah okay. that's nice so as a child what did you want to be growing a up a doctor so a i can doctor. treat my mom Aww. if she falls sick that is so but sweet. everyone wanted to be a doctor right it, i wanted to be a doctor as well yeah <laughs> my mom wanted me to be a doctor to be honest at some point i wanted to be a lawyer a lawyer it's always yeah. doctor lawyer or there's one more engineer I feel like I would really make a good lawyer though because yeah. I'm good like I'm really good I just don't like reading and I don't know that much English <laughs> <laughs> so hey the English are, are, I like the are, honesty are. it's okay <laughs> you can you can fight cases in Kiswahili <laughs> I mean I don't no, think it's really true Kiswahili is not that no? good hey okay. uh -uh. hey you've believed in me thanks it's fine maybe it's because <laughs> deep down you know with all these South African videos that you're doing <laughs> Maybe we're gonna like hear you like speak. What, what is it called? Co the one they, they speak with the with the click with sound. The click sound. Well, there's so many, but yeah. I think it's Hosa. Hosa. I was yeah. just gonna say that, but I, was like, I didn't. I didn't know how to say it properly. <laughs> at, least, at least you had my back there. Um, Hois. Some my my director just said Hoisan. I don't know. But there's that too. Yeah. Okay, there's those that. ones. Those are those are actually the ones who speak in like proper. Like everything is just click. Clicking from here to there. Interesting. <laughs> then conk one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Esther, tell me about um, you know your journey in the industry. How you mm -hmm. climbed up the ladder, started off uh, doing videos on TikTok, and then moved to Instagram, and then had videos that went viral, and you know people, um, huge names, celebrities, Saudi Soul, like guys are sharing your videos everywhere, <laughs> and it just became like. I feel like there was two or three months where all I was seeing on my social media was Esther Kazungu on Twitter, <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> Did you ever see that coming? Did you expect that to happen? Of course not. Yeah. I, well, this is something I've realized. I'm a really, I'm a slow grower, but I'm just glad it's, it's never like stagnant. Stagnant, I'm just, yes. it's, it's, it's small, small steps towards like a big dream. Mm -hmm. Most people have niches, and everyone mo I've seen most of the people who have found their niche and focus on their niche, they have gone far and in terms of numbers and whatnot. But I don't think I really have a niche. I started out, the parliament videos just came, you mm. know, after I did the one video, and then I had to continue. But before then, I was doing other types of content. Mm. And you're I a great never dancer. Yes. By Thank the way, you. Esther is a fantastic dancer. We've been to dance class together. But she's more um, energetic, though. We, we've had a great time, and we've <laughs> shared the same space, and we both love to dance. But like Esther is also a good dancer. Just thought I'd mention that. Thank you. Thank you. But yeah, before that, I used to do like a lot of other content, which I didn't. I never wanted to stop. And I feel like b because I've been doing parliament videos for so long. Yeah. I don't remember how I used to create that other content. I hope eventually I can get back. Okay. But I, um, 
because I don't have a niche and I yeah. want to do everything, yeah. I've accepted that my growth will forever be very gradual and very okay. slow. Okay. Because I I don't have the niche, but uh, the the process has been amazing. I didn't expect, of course, the the blowing up, especially from a video that's not about uh, something Kenyans Kenya. really, uh, yeah, yes. something in Kenya. So I. Um, Literally, I don't think anyone you know, ever, ever sees such things coming. So I'm just, I'm grateful for where I am. I hope I can still keep growing and yeah. You mentioned that you actually left your job, yeah. right? Mm. Did you leave your job to focus on content creation 100%? Or did sort you of. did you leave it because you wanted to like do other things <laughs> and experiment? I I left one because okay. Well, we started working from home, and okay. I slowly started going back to content creation. Yes, I had uh, taken a break for like a whole year. Mm -hmm. That was the whole of 2019. So I, and that's because work was really time consuming. Like it was really taking up a lot of my time. Mm. By the time I'm leaving the office, it's either six, seven. Mm. I spend hours in traffic. Mm. By the time I'm home, I'm exhausted. So I just sleep, wake up the following day, repeat. So I, I, I left because I was tired of routine. Yeah. <laughs> really tired of routine. I, 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 I can't do routine. Mm. I hope I never have to do routine again. I can't wake up. I'm, I'm a night person. Mm. Most of my videos, like yesterday, <laughs> yesterday I, I slept at, or oh, I slept today <laughs> at three or was it four? Because I was editing a video. Yeah. Wow. So I'm most active at night. Okay. So I left because. Uh, being in an 8 to 5 isn't really something that's mm. benefiting me because most of my ideas come at night. Uh, I also left because of... Now I really... Seeing that I was going back to content creation and insights were picking up, I wanted to pursue it one more time and try to be as consistent as possible yes. and see what will come out of it. And look, it paid off. Yes. Oh, it has God. paid off. I left, I you know, back in the done. day, I remember content creators and... and, and artists and dancers and basically entertainers mm. if you're a creative um you would have to have another job job yeah. a nine to five job yeah no matter what yeah. to be able to sustain yourself but now i feel like we've moved into a space where we can actually just solely rely on content creation and yes. influencing yes. which i think is is amazing yeah well what are your hopes for the next five years when it comes to content creation what are some of the things that you know you have do you have a list no, I don't do those. You don't do those? I'm as spontaneous as it gets. Okay. Like, I, I hate writing. The, I hate yeah. goals. Uh, sorry to say, I hate vision boards and what. Yeah. I feel like every time I see someone putting up a vision board, I'm like, I'm stressed. <laughs> you stop. feel the pressure. <laughs> just stop. Okay, but I'm sure you have something in mind of what you'd like to do. I just want to go back to creating, like, content aside from the parliament videos you okay. get. But other than that, I hope... I go beyond the borders hey. <laughs> and you know just we go international, international. <laughs> I want to be in the Grammys and Oscars okay. all because I, I, I I'm saying all because I, I can't I can't be boxed I feel like I can't be boxed that's and me. I that's fit me. anywhere that's yeah me exactly because I can't be boxed either <laughs> um, and I feel like this generation that we're in, millennials especially and Gen Z now, um, we are in this in this mindset where we don't want to be boxed. Yes. We don't want to be told that you can only do one particular thing mm. and you can only be good at one particular thing. Mm. You want to try out things as they come. You want to grab opportunities and you just want to live, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I remembered something that I, I, I want to do. I want to actively pursue acting. No, oh, nice. Yeah, like I want to go for you the auditions. Been, you actually have yes. been <laughs> in, in a few, I think, short films, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. I did, uh, the, the last project I did was Wembe Squad, which is yes. on YouTube. Totally loved it. Totally loved the production. Loved the team. Loved everything. And uh, Kate so Actress was there, right? No, no, no. This one, it? no. This one, no. There this was one was that you did with This Kate one was with Foy. I did it with okay. Foy, yeah. So I, I fear auditions. They give me anxiety. Do you fear rejection? Yes, mm. <laughs> I fear. No, no, that's why you fear auditions, because <laughs> I'm the same. I don't like going for auditions because I'm but always scared. But also, I, I, I hate feel. impromptu auditions, because like when they, no improv, like when they tell you, you have to get there, and then now they give you what yeah. to do there. I'd like for them to, like Just if there's a script and I can now prepare on a mm. specific character, I prefer those ones. But I'll just still, I'm, 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 I, I told myself I'm going to challenge myself and um, exercise that and Patricia yeah. Kihoro told me exercise that audition muscle because there's no other way there's no so other yeah. way yeah it's the truth mm. okay
Good luck with that. I Thank hope you. that you know we see you in in big movies and of course Amen. we we see you we see with Esther my Kazungu dear. doing the most <laughs> when it comes to acting. Yes. And we, we see Esther Kazungu the actress. Yes. Right? Yes. We've seen Esther Kazungu the dancer. We've seen Esther Kazungu the entertainer. We've seen Esther Kazungu the uh, the wife. We've seen Esther Kazungu <laughs> um, the makeup artist. I've, oh, I've been uh, seeing oh. you doing a lot of makeup these days. Yes. 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 So basically, mm. you're doing a lot of things. So now <laughs> acting is next, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> cool. As to any words, uh, last words that you'd like to g g you know say to your fans and followers and people who are watching right now mm. who've, who've loved your content and who've supported you along the way. I just want to say thank you. Yeah. Like yeah, I will not be here without them yeah. literally so i'm grateful for all the support uh grateful for all the encouragement because by this sometimes when i go on break i come back and i oh okay i went on one break but when i come back i find like sweet messages i hope you're okay yeah, yeah and that's i feel, I feel like that's do really you take sweet. breaks often by the way Social i haven't breaks? been but i now i want to make it uh, intentional. intentional yes mm. I want to do this intentionally because it really helps it really helps I took a break last week and it was the absolute best any advice for young people out there who want to get into content creation and just don't know where to start because it's a confusing space to be in yeah I mean just start because I also just I started in 2016 by wow. the way yeah I just I, I got a so new it took you phone. four years yes to <laughs> actually get to where you are yes Amazing. yes mm, on and off of course uh but i um, just thought where you are that that's really the 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 main i know it sounds like a cliche because i was saying what do they actually mean yeah. but we mean but just start somewhere yeah, just start somewhere with whatever you have start with that and then you go as you as you you get consistent you'll be able to first of all you're just building your cv and your portfolio and your visibility then eventually you'll you'll be able to now build up you want to get maybe save up to get like a better phone mm. save up to get um, lighting. artificial lighting yes. yeah 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 and and so on and so forth and also just take care of your mental health because now that's that's like the foundation if yes. you're not okay up here yeah. then you'll be able to create exactly amazing thank you so much for coming thanks i for had me. a great time just speaking to you Me and you're too. learning more about your journey um and yeah i hope to see more of esther kazungu everywhere <laughs> not just on Instagram, yes. but everywhere. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Thanks for thank having me. Thank you so much me. for being here. I hope you enjoyed the interview. Uh, remember, you can always interact with us. In fact, let me check. I'm sure there's a few messages out here. Um, people, by the way, have been very excited for this particular show because people love you on Twitter. Oh, I don't know if you've known you. that. Okay, so I, we've got El, I don't know. El Diablo. That's an interesting name who says tuned in love esther we've got one from bernard who said tuned in big up to esther uh, from you. bungoma and then another one here and that's from peter who says love esther's content she's funny okay thank you love it so yes thank you so much for tuning in we'll do this again next week same time same place until then don't go too far because dj cold jacks on the other side with disco funk taking you back in time it's time to disco shiksha aurora signing out Take care.